Hi guys, so I'm about to head off to my friend Jill's birthday party which is mermaid themed and I think that explains why I look a little bit more dressy slash purple-ish than normal. I'm trying to trying to go with the theme. Um, I did have a little bit of time spare so I thought I would finally get around to filming my top 10 classics. These are my favourite 10 classic pieces of literature and I don't mean classical, I don't mean ancient literature, I'm going to do an entirely separate top 10 ancient literature, classical literature video because I have so many of those and I've read so many of those. These are more recent pieces of literature in terms of classics, you know, the 17, 18, 19 hundreds. I'm sure that's all pretty self-explanatory but just to clarify there'll be no ancient literature in this video, that's getting a separate video. Um, these are ranging from the 1800s into the mid 1900s. I actually haven't read a terrible amount of literature between the sort of medieval period and the 19th century. I've read tons of ancient literature, I've read loads of modern literature, quite a lot of 20th century literature but between that it's not an intense amount, it's still a vast, vast array of literature that I'm exploring myself. But I do have some favourites from what I have read and perhaps these will be interesting to those of you that already like classics or are looking for somewhere to start with classics. Without further ado, let's get into the books, shall we? These are in no particular order, I'm just going to start with the first one on my lap and that is Therese Racan by Emile Zola. This is a piece of literature that was originally written in French and the translation I have here is published by Vintage Classics in what is possibly one of the most beautiful editions of any book I own. I love this hardback. The translation itself is by Adam Thorpe. But Zola lived and wrote his literature in the 1800s. This is the only book by him I've read so far but I absolutely adore it. It is such a dark, unsettling novel. It, it follows a couple, a young couple who are married um, through more pressure and convenience, um, the female of the couple being Therese Rakan and um, she is basically forced to marry her cousin by her aunt and then ends up developing a relationship with her husband's friend and they start a sordid affair which takes them to darker and darker crevices of human capabilities and um, some pretty dark stuff happens. I really don't want to ruin the plot for you but hopefully that, you know, sparks your interest. It's so fantastically written and this translation is great, I really enjoyed it. It also felt to me as if there was this little hint at almost sort of dark satire slash comedy in there, like there was moments of just pure ridiculous darkness that it made me kind of laugh, it was just so flamboyant and, and mad as a plot goes and it just escalates and escalates and it's so fascinating to read, beautifully written and I just couldn't recommend this one more highly. I think one of the earliest classics I read and one of the first classics I truly fell in love with though was Sunset Song by Lewis Grassic Gibbon. That is the first in uh, Lewis Grassic Gibbon's trilogy, A Scots Queer, which um, this is my edition is a bind up of all three, but the first one is the one that I adore. It was first published in 1932 and follows our protagonist Chris Guthrie who is a young girl living in rural Scotland and um, she's grown up on farmlands, she's a farmer's daughter um, but she's sort of growing into herself throughout the story. It takes place sort of before, during and after the First World War and it's about Chris Guthrie, you know, becoming herself, getting to know herself, exploring her relationship with the land, whether she wants to leave rural Scotland and go to the city to study, um, her relationships with her family as well as um, um, the young men that she falls in love with and her and herself and it's so beautiful, she's such a wonderful character, such an independent spirit despite all of the other things that go on um, in her life, the impact, the direction it takes, she remains this very strong, willful character and not strong in the sense of unbreakable and unemotional but just 
such a well-rounded full person and I just fell in love with her as a teenager. Um, her character really spoke to me and I think her story is so fascinating and so beautiful and um, the, the book itself is structured in a really nice way. It, it's structured according to the different seasons in the farming calendar and then um, the different points at which the crops are in, in, in their growth um, to match the different stages in Chris's life. The writing is also wonderful in that the uh, speech is all very much written in a Scots dialect that is true to the area in which she lives, accompanied by the more narrative um, sentences being written in a more traditional English prose and it's just a beautiful combination of so many things, there's so much going on in the story and I just love it. Another book that was first published in the early 1900s, specifically 1908 that I adore, is the Magician by W. Somerset Maugham. This is another quite dark story. It's set in Paris and it follows a young couple who are introduced to this strange, eccentric man who is known as the Magician. And this Magician, Alistair Crowley, is obsessed by the occult and dark magic and takes a liking to the young woman in this couple and um, kind of starts to mess with her head. Um, and, and almost hypnotically, um, she can't stop thinking about him, um, strange things are happening, what is this man up to, um, and it's about, yeah, this magician, his impact on these young people's lives and, and they're exploring that mystery and then trying to keep a hold of themselves. It's just wonderful, it's not very long, so it's difficult to sum up the plot without giving any spoilers away, so I'll stop there, but it's just fascinating, again, really wonderfully written, really, really captures your imagination. I sped for this one, I couldn't put it down. Um, just, a, just a really wonderful, intriguing novel. I love the setting of France, again, a lot of dark French settings, um, but I just, I love that, the exploring of that kind of bohemian artistic culture of that time in France, and it was just a really nice combination of things, and I love, love, love this book. Moving on to a little bit more of a modern classic, this book was first published in 1951, and it is The Day of the Triffids by John Wyndham. This is for those of you who enjoy a bit of science fiction or dystopian or apocalyptic stories, as this is a true classic of that genre. It is an apocalyptic novel. And I've read quite a few John Wyndham's novels, enjoyed a lot of them, but I would say this is definitely my favourite of what I've read. Um, it's probably his most famous book as well, and I, I can see why it has so much going for it. And it really, really captures the imagination. The apocalypse in the story begins when our protagonist wakens and he's had an accident, which means that he's not been able to see for a little while, his eyes have been covered up whilst he's been recovering, and he can now see, but everyone else, it seems, in London has gone blind, um, which naturally causes chaos. London in the 1950s is not set up for a entirely blind population and people are panicking as to what's going on and everything just starts to fall apart in the city. Whilst he then obviously has to, you know, walk out there and try and figure out what's happened, what's he going to do, protect himself, um, and then he obviously meets some other characters and lots and lots happens. Um, but what the other layer to the story is the Triffids, of course. Now this is set in a London pretty much as it would have been with the addition of Triffids, which are these strange plants that started growing and then they started breeding them because they were really useful um, and they almost seem alive more so than a regular plant. And the Triffids are blind, but they're used to being blind. So suddenly the tables have been turned and the Triffids had the upper hand. Um, and it's, it's so good, it's so good. It's really disturbing in moments. And the way John Wyndham writes, you really feel as if you're there and you feel quite heavily affected by um, the emotions running rampant throughout the story and the fear and everything that's happening. It really gets to you. And it's also constantly full of twists and turns. You know, one thing's happening and then it decides to go in a completely different direction. So you don't see what's coming. Um, the plot's really fun to follow and it's really well, masterfully done. Um, yeah, love this book. Am I saying that about all of them? I love them. It should be a given, right? So the next book slash series of book is a series that you have heard me talk about to no end. They were my top 10 favourite books of all time. I've done a whole video about them and yes, 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 they are Sherlock Holmes. The Sherlock Holmes stories and novels by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I adore Sherlock Holmes with 
all of my heart. If you're not familiar, it is a detective series following an amateur detective, Sherlock Holmes, and his companion, Dr. Watson, in the late 1800s and early 1900s. And there's four novels and 60 short stories, so plenty to get your teeth into. This is one of the novels. This is the second novel that um, and story that was released of Sherlock Holmes, The Sign of Four, and one of my favorites. I think it's a really mad mystery that you would never guess what's coming, which is the point. The, the stories of Sherlock Holmes are not the kind of detective stories where the reader can guess the ending. It's not possible. You do not have the insight that Sherlock Holmes has as they're being narrated to you by his companion Dr. Watson who is just kind of following behind Holmes thinking what on earth is going on. I feel like I don't really need to explain too much about Sherlock Holmes. There's so many adaptations. It's everywhere. You all know what it is. But if you haven't read the originals, I would highly, highly recommend you do. I've got a whole introduction to the series if you want to check it out. I love this story. It's the, my favourite, like I mentioned. But the first one in the actual chronology is A Study in Scarlet. So that might interest you if you're looking for a place to start. And yeah. Love Sherlock Holmes so much. I'm such a hardcore Sherlock Holmes fan, guys. Now, my next book is definitely the most recent classic of all of the books in this video. It came out originally in the 1960s, and it is a modern classic that I think many of you will enjoy, and that is We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. I love this book so much. It is so good. It's another quite dark story. It verges on sort of it's quite ghostly in nature, not that it's about ghosts, but it's quite haunting the way it's written. Um, it's sort of, you know, mild horror, um, but it's more unsettling and unnerving than it is horrific. Um, and it constantly has you wondering and unsettled. It's narrated by a young girl who lives in the house on the top of the hill we have always lived in the castle with her sister and her uncle and they used to have a much bigger family until one morning um, a number of their family members dropped dead and that's also why their uncle is now in a wheelchair. Everyone in the village suspects that our protagonist's sister is actually responsible for their deaths so they are treated like pariahs by the village at the bottom of the hill and it's very very much about mass hysteria and gossip and rumour mongering and it's all told from the perspective of this slightly unsettling young narrator and it's so fascinating I, I cannot explain to you you will zoom through this one it's so so short and just really mesmerizing I think it would appeal to a lot of different readers and again really beautifully written Shirley Jackson is just pretty fantastic and the eerily beautiful. Now going back to a 19th century classic that I am certain you have all heard of but if you haven't read I would highly recommend finally giving a go and that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This is just brilliant. This is a book I meant to read for ages and put off and put off and put off until Sana from Books and Quills said no Jane it's amazing you must 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 read it. She compelled me finally and I'm so glad she did because once you get into this book it is so absorbing. I think the first little bit's a little bit difficult when Jane Eyre is a young girl and she's at school, although it's a very small portion of the book, it's a little bit of a slog to get through. But as soon as uh, Jane is a grown woman and um, she goes to take on her role as governess to the ward of Mr. Rochester, the plot really becomes entirely consuming and you cannot put it down. Jane Eyre is a fantastic character. She's such a wonderful woman. She's not of the highest class of society, that's why she's a governess. She's constantly described as plain, so it's just generally kind of seen as a bit of an underdog in society at the time, yet she just makes some of the most strong-willed decisions and just, she's just wonderful. She just really comes to know herself in a wonderful way in this story and there's also a bit of a mystery going on at the house that she's a governess in um, so that definitely keeps you interested as to what's to going on. There's, there's a lot going on in this story and it's a classic for a reason. It is so wonderfully told, wonderfully written, a wonderful character and I just would really highly recommend it. Next up however is Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. This is an American classic which I realise now None of my other books are. I have some Scottish classics, some French classics, some English classics, um, but this is my first American classic for this video. This story was first published in 1937 and follows George and Lenny, two drifters of American society um, out there looking for work who come to find a job on a farm together. And 
It's about them dreaming of a better life for themselves. Um, George very much takes care of Lenny and together they just dream of this future. They want to work to attain this this future where they, you know, have their own freedom, that they're not sort of the kind of drifter lackeys of other employers. And it's it's a quite a sad novel, a lot of sad, forlorn feelings of um, kind of wistfulness and um, unfulfilled desires and longing and how these two men experience their lives and are outsiders um, together. It's been quite a long time since I read this one but it's a book that has very much stayed with me and I found very compelling and impactful when I was reading and just, yeah, it's a, it's a really wonderful yet yeah, harrowing tale. I, I would really recommend it. But next up I have a Italian classic and that is the Italian folk tales of Italo Calvino. This book was released in the mid 1900s and it is very much a classic collection of fairy tale folk tale type stories, much like the Grimm's Brothers. I feel like these are the Italian Grimm's fairy tales. They are very traditional, wonderfully imaginative, magical little stories about all the kind of things you would encounter in fairy tales. They are just a wonderful example of the fairy tale folk tale genre, and it's a wonderful collection. I don't think a lot, it's a big book, yet I read it in one week when I was quite young because I couldn't put it down each story I wanted more, I wanted more, I more, wanted more despite the sort of repetitiveness and then the shortness of fairy tales that might make you not want to read tons at once. I wanted to read this whole book and be completely consumed by it. They are just wonderful examples of their genre. Lastly though I thought I would mention one of my favourite children's classics. I do have a few favourite children's classics but I think I'll save those for my favourite children's books of all time and just mention one of them here as this was a favourite when I was a child and I read it numerous times. That is The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. Yes indeed, an absolute classic. You've all heard of this and probably seen an adaptation of it somewhere along the line. It's actually the second in C.S. Lewis's Narnia Chronicles and I have read the first in the series, The Magician's Nephew, as well as the third in the series but never read the rest of them. I think there's about eight. Um, but this book stands on its own. I read this one before I read the first one, Magician's Nephew. And I think there's a reason this one captures so many people's imaginations and is constantly adapted. It's just truly wonderful and there's so much going on in what is a very short book. It will just doubtlessly capture your imagination even as an adult, I think. I must also say I love, love, love the old BBC miniseries adaptation of this. It was one of my favourites as a kid and I used to rewatch the VHS over and over and over again. But the book is pretty good too. This book is set during World War II and follows a group of four siblings who are refugees and have been sent to live in um, the countryside away from the major war zones of England. Um, there is Lucy, Susan, Edmund and Peter. Now whilst living in this grand home that they have been sent to together, one of the siblings, Lucy, stumbles across a magical world called Narnia in a wardrobe. And in this land it is forever winter, it is snow covered, there are fawns and magical talking animals and as well as an evil witch. I feel like I don't need to say much more about this one other than it's never too late to read this book and I would highly recommend giving it a shot if you've never given the original a shot yet. It just has all of the markers of a great fantasy book and everything you could want in a child's fantasy book. But those are my top 10 favourite classics. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do feel free to recommend me some more classics that you think I would enjoy. And if you have any thoughts on any of the books I've mentioned in this video, I would of course love to hear them. But um, like I mentioned, there will be a top 10 children's books and a top 10 ancient literature coming your way at some point. Until then though, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.